Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is uh, most often associated with combat and is rarely connected to childbirth. However, each year, thousands of Irish women have a traumatic birth experience and many can develop postnatal PTSD. As part of our Mental Health Week, our next guest is going to share her personal story of being diagnosed with postnatal PTSD after having a difficult birth experience with her first child. Hilary Fitzpatrick joins us now along with psychologist Alison Keating. Well, you're both very welcome to the show. Now, this is a very interesting story for people who aren't even parents, and I, I really love how the story came together because you two actually know each other. And yeah. we'll get to that in a bit, but this was the birth of your son, Noah, yeah. who's now yeah. five. So mm -hmm. it's what every woman gets the, the fear of. Did you have your hospital bag packed at 31 weeks? Because that's when he decided he was coming. No, I had nothing. Absolutely nothing. I had literally gone into work that day, done a full day's work, come home, had dinner, had seconds because I was pregnant and that's what you're allowed to do. Oh yeah, you're eating for two. Exactly. And I stood up from the dinner table and I had, like what happens in the movies, just the waters went completely. So I hadn't a clue what was happening because I was only 31 weeks and six days. So we went into the hospital and um, checked out and was told, no, you're fine, the baby's still fine, but there's no way you're having this baby like for weeks. But we might keep you in and we'll induce you in a few weeks' time. So I remember thinking, OK, that's fine. So they sent my husband home. And I was on the pre-labour ward myself because they hadn't put me to a ward because it was late. And um, I kind of felt myself something wasn't right. And but I'd you'd never been in labour before. Never so been in labour. She was yeah. my first pregnancy. Yeah. There was no reason to think anything was going wrong because I'd had a straightforward pregnancy. And... Um, they kept checking me, said, no, you're not going to have this baby tonight. And then at six o'clock in the morning, I was brought down to the labour ward and at 6.51, I was holding him. He came very, very fast. Your husband actually missed the birth, He missed he? the birth. The car broke down, because that's what happens in these silly <laughs> situations. <laughs> car broke down, he missed the birth. Um, Noah was taken then up to the ICU because he was quite poorly. And then I just went to the ward without my baby, which was quite difficult. But I was expressing for him. And then when he was two or three days old, I can't quite remember. I woke up early in the morning and I felt really uncomfortable. We're seeing him there. I mean, look, there, that's him when he's big and bubbly, <laughs> he was, but uh, he, he was, was very there. tiny when he was he born. He was. And then his lungs had collapsed in uh, one night and I had actually witnessed that because I went up to drop my milk to the ward for him. And when I walked in, all the alarms were going off. And I remember thinking, oh, some poor baby is in distress. And I realised it was my baby. And they were trying to ventilate him and they wouldn't let him because there was an obstruction in the way and he was, he was quite sick. So um, they got him back and he was fine. And then we spent the next five weeks just living life in the hospital. And then he came home and I was perfectly fine when we were in the hospital. I was superwoman. I was expressing around the clock and I was there 12 hours every day and I was present and I was active. And it's just when we brought him home, that walk from the car to the door, and I realised I'd never walked with my baby before and he was five weeks old because he'd always been attached to monitors. And um, I just was hit with this incredible anxiety and a very dark couple of weeks pursued after that where I just was terrified that something was going to happen or somebody unclean was going to come into the house and make my baby sick again. So um, very dark few weeks pursued. Because I think new mums feel like that anyway, that once you kind of get out of the cocoon of hospital, mm. that you have a fear. And I mean, yeah. look, you fear that you're going to have a miscarriage, then you fear that there's going to be something wrong with them when they're born, yeah. and you fear cot death. You always want to protect them and you think something's going to happen to them. But I mean, yours was very different to this. It would have been taken to a new level, yeah. maybe because of your experience. So did you feel that this was... When did you feel that this maybe wasn't something that well, was normal? Well, when I normal? was looking around and I noticed that every other mother seemed completely together and I was just terrified somebody was going to make my child but sick. But they all think that. And oh. they're all looking at you thinking you look completely Possibly. together. They're all faking And I, I went down... <laughs> Still. Totally. And I went down to my local supermarket to do some groceries and I was going through the self-service checkout and the little beep that goes through there is the exact same heart monitor beep that was in the ICU. So when I was putting my groceries through, it, something went, some alarm went off and I thought something was happening again and I had this panic attack in the middle of my local supermarket and I just ran out there like... So what, you just couldn't catch your breath? Couldn't catch my breath, just fear, I just wanted to get my baby and get out of there, I just felt like something really bad was going to happen. But yes, yeah, didn't tell anybody that that had happened, just went on with life. Then one day in Malahide, you yeah. met Alison, whose sister Allison? is a friend of yours. Yeah, I was having a cup of tea with my friend Sarah Jane in Malahide. And Alison just happened to be there as well. I just popped pa in, actually, just in, to get yeah. one for myself. And um, 
we just got chatting. We were swapping birth yeah. stories actually because I had just had Haley. That's right. Yeah. Alison said to me, How are you? And I was like, Yeah, I'm grand. <laughs> the usual. And she goes, No, but how are you really? Because you've been through a lot. And it was just that moment that somebody had actually asked how I was rather than how the baby was that I was like, Actually, I'm not okay. And that brought me down another path then. Did you know instantly that this wasn't delayed baby blues or wasn't postnatal depression? Did you? Because I had never heard of postnatal PTSD. Yeah. Now, it makes perfect sense when you explain it, when you think of what you went through. Yeah, a and trauma. What, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So... I just, I just knew what Hillary had gone through. And w when the very fast, high-pitched, I'm fine, came back to me, I thought, Anna, really? Like, mm. how are you? And, and it was great because I, I did see, like, a, a penny dropped. Mm. Um, and like Hillary saying, I think, I think women can shut down because you're told you're so lucky the baby's at a hospital and, and they're fine now and it's all about the baby and, and you were in kind of robot mom mode yeah. in the hospital. But then the reality of being outside and the absolute sheer terror of, of being responsible for a child that you've seen at the brink Mm -hmm. You know, you, you saw, you, it's what you saw, it's what you heard. When the doctors saw Hillary, they actually asked her to stand behind the curtain. So she saw certain things and heard certain things. And in terms of PTSD with, with birth, it's, it's the trauma of it. And, you know, in terms of being like hypervigilant, and I mean, I have to say, I definitely had the um, mm -hmm. hand sanitizer at the door as well, but you would be terrified. It's a kind of persistent state of really high arousal where you're just watching everything, you're, you're checking in on the baby, are they breathing, are they okay? But Alison, I'm just thinking, uh, um, Hilary comes home with the baby, okay, she's, she's anxious and she's having a, a tough time with it and certain things will set her off. But if she hadn't had that accidental or happy accidental meeting with you, she probably would have gone on existing like this and, you know, there'd have been weeks where nothing happened, then maybe you might have heard an alarm or mm. something else would have triggered it and it would have brought back memories and you probably would never have put two and two together unless you had met... I really don't think I would have and my husband said to me, it was like when I came home, I internally combusted because I had been superwoman for so long and then all of a sudden I just had this, like, fear. But I lived with that. I thought that was maybe normal that went with my experiences and, and because I think a lot of people don't really talk about... Mm -hmm. The negative sides or anything that's bad happening, it's always like try to focus on the positives, make yourself feel better. But you my baby's here, baby. I have a, he's yeah, okay yeah, now. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, but it doesn't there, take I mean, there are hundreds things. of women with babies in um, neonatal units, uh, you know, they, they're, they're, they're there for weeks mm. afterwards mm. and they're going through, and you know, sometimes it can be life or death, maybe they have to go through a series of operations, and then they get the baby home and everything is grand. And then a year, 18 months, two years down the road, something happens and this an emotional truck hits them and they have no idea what the hell is going on. Yeah. And it's very likely to be postnatal PTSD. And it's really interesting from my perspective, what I often see is it can actually hit years later. Like Hillary saying, <clears throat> it, 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 the possibility of it going undiagnosed is, is pretty high. And also, it's that pressure mm. that women feel, especially on your first child, because you don't know what normal is. You know you've had a very you know, kind of crazy time, but you've gone into mode of just kind of surviving. And you weren't sleeping. No. You know, you weren't getting any sleep. So, I mean, when the sleep goes out the window, it, your, your, your mental health is, is yeah. everybody's is, is, is seriously impacted. But I often see that kind of other things, like even 20 years later, can trigger it off, like a road traffic accident, like a, a small road traffic accident, or you, you'd be surprised that something that, that isn't a huge event can trigger this, as you say, a truck hitting somebody. And it's just, I think, taking the time to talk and actually saying it as it is. We, we definitely have a lot of pressure, say, with women after they've had children, whether it's post-traumatic stress or just a, 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 a straightforward birth experience. But I don't think people are actually able to say how it actually is because we're afraid of what other people will, will, will think. Will well, you think. want to appear like Superwoman and you don't have to. And I think what you questioned is really important that we ask again, that even though we hear I'm fine, say, no, really, how are you? And I think to get that mm. out there is great. And it's great that everything is so well now. Noah's yeah. five now and you have one-year-old Oscar. I do. So you got brave and went for it again. Well, so it took us four you. years. <laughs> but you did it. Thank you we very did. much for sharing thank your you. story with us today. And thank you to Alison. Thank you. Now, coming up after the break, we're going to be reviewing this week's uh, movie hits and misses, including the latest installment of the Lego movie franchise.